Your next reading is introduction to alternative investment. Starting with question number one. Which of the following is least likely, mind the word, least likely to be considered an alternative investment? Uh, if you have read your uh, theory, you would know real estate is alternative investment. Commodities, yes, alternative investment. But long only equity funds, well, they are considered as a traditional investment. So this is least likely to be considered as an alternative investment. So that makes C to be the correct option. Question number two. Private equity funds are most likely to use merger arbitrage strategies incorrect because uh, this is the strategy used by hedge funds. Merger arbitrage seeks to profit from buying a takeover stock at a discount to its acquisition price. So this is not likely to be used by private equity funds. Leveraged buyouts, yes. The majority of private equity equities, it all involves leveraged buyouts. Then why not market neutral strategies? What is market neutral strategy? A market neutral strategy is a type of investment strategy undertaken to profit from both increasing and decreasing prices in one or more market. So you simply just gain by seeing the difference between the high price and the low price even in the same market or in other markets to avoid some specific form of market risk. This is normally used by hedge funds. So in this question we get B to be the correct option. Question number three. An investor is seeking an investment that can take long and short positions, may use multi-strategies and historically exhibits low correlation with the traditional investment portfolio. The investor's goals will be best satisfied with an investment in real estate, hedge funds or private equity. Very straightforward hedge fund. Why? Because hedge funds, they usually use variety of strategies and uh, their returns are uh, less correlated with traditional investments. And of course, they can take long and short positions. So that makes B to be the correct option. Question number four. Relative to traditional investments, alternative investments are least likely, again, mind this word, this can twist the question around, least likely to be characterized by high level of transparency, this is least likely because alternative investments they are typically they are typically involve involving low level of transparency so this is least likely limited historical return this is true significant restrictions on redemptions you invest and it will be difficult for you to to take your positions out that is true so b and c are true this is least likely that makes uh, a to be the correct option Next question number five. Alternative investment funds are typically managed actively to generate positive beta return assuming that markets are efficient. There are many different approaches to manage alternative investment but most of the time typically these funds are actively managed so that makes A to be the correct option. Compared with the traditional investments, alternative investments are more likely to have greater use of leverage. This is true. Yes, there is a greater use of leverage. Long only positions in liquid assets. Well, not necessary. They take short positions as well. So this is not true. More transparent and reliable risk and return data. Wrong. In fact, less transparent less reliable risk and return data. This is incorrect as well. So the most likely situation is A, compared with traditional investments, alternative investments are more likely to have greater use of leverage. That makes A to be the correct option. The potential benefits of allocating a portion of portfolio to alternative investment include ease of manager selection, wrong, incorrect. 
rather it is a challenge it is a challenge to select a suitable portfolio manager for the alternative investment it is not the ease rather it's challenge so this is incorrect i'm going to cross it out and at the same time accessible and reliable measures of risk and return this is again not a benefit rather it's a challenge that is the problem with alternative investment there are issue of reliability of measures of risk and return then it has to be b and let us convince ourselves that it is b the potential benefit of allocating a portion of a portfolio to alternative investment include improvement in portfolio's risk return relationship correct why because because these investments they have less than perfect correlation with other assets in the portfolio so this results in in the overall risk relation return to become even more useful for the investor or we should say it an improvement in risk return relationship so that makes b to be the correct option next question an investor may prefer a single hedge fund rather than to go for fund of funds why would he go for a single hedge fund if he seeks due diligence expertise now this is interesting remember funds of funds they have some expertise in conducting due diligence on hedge funds so this is the feature of funds of funds not a single hedge fund so this this is not the reason why an investor would choose a single hedge fund incorrect better redemption terms again funds of funds they offer more favorable redemption terms than an individual single hedge fund so this is again a feature of funds of funds then an investor may prefer a single hedge fund because he seeks a less complex fee structure this is correct a single hedge fund has a less complex fee structure whereas uh, funds of funds it could have a multi layered fee structure which could be complex so that is the reason for c uh, the investor would go for a single hedge fund and that makes c to be the correct option hedge funds are similar to private equity funds in that both are typically structured as partnership this is correct uh, private equity funds and uh, hedge funds they are typically structured as as partnerships where the investors are limited partners and the fund is the general partner so this is true for both private equity and the hedge funds why not be because under both assets as uh, hedge funds are similar to private equity funds in that both assess management fee based on assets under management this is not true in both private equity and hedge funds the private equity fund is uh, the management fee in the private equity fund basically it is based on the committed capital right but for hedge funds the fee is based on the assets under management so they are not the same they do not have the same characteristics with regard to the fee then lastly hedge funds and uh, equity funds both do not earn an incentive fee until the initial investment is repaid this is incorrect because for private equity private equity funds general partners they they do not earn an incentive fee until the limited partners have received their initial investment so this is true for private equity but not for hedge funds so that's why it is not the right option an investor seeks uh, a current income stream as a component of total return and desires an investment that historically has low correlation with other minded with other asset classes the investment most likely to achieve the investor's goal is uh, timberland collectibles and commodities well if you have read your theory you would know that timberland offers a stream of income that is based on the sale of timber of course timber products so since these returns are generally 
not highly correlated with the return of the other assets so this will fulfill the objective of the investor not the collectibles not commodities hence makes a to be the correct option both event driven and macro hedge fund strategies use long and short positions yes that is true long and short positions are used both by both types of hedge funds to profit from uh, any anticipated market or security moves but remember event driven strategies they use a bottom up approach what's a bottom up approach this approach seek to profit from some short term events like uh, an acquisition or restructuring some corporate action so this this is specific for event driven but when you say macro hedge funds macro hedge funds focus on seeking profit from expected movements in some changes in economic variables macroeconomic variables so this is specifically for for the macro hedge so what is common in those both that they go both for long and short positions to generate returns so that is a to be the correct option okay next question hedge fund losses are most likely to be increased or magnified by a margin call well let's say a hedge fund holds a certain position and if there's a margin call in that case the fund manager may be forced to liquidate this losing position in a security and if this this position is large it may put some further price uh, further pressure on the security price resulting the loss could be further magnified further losses so so margin call can result in uh, in magnification of losses whereas these two lock up period and uh, redemption notice period these are in fact uh, good for the hedge fund restriction on redemption such as this lock up period and uh, redemption notice period it will allow the manager to have more leverage to close the position in a more orderly fashion and uh, this will basically protect the manager to to go for forced sale and in this case the force could be further liquidated uh, magnified so this is the correct option a margin call this could magnify losses okay next question the first stage of financing at which a venture capital fund most likely invest is the seed stage yes that's correct that is correct the seed stage is basically the first stage at which the venture capital funds invest and the next two seed stage is what you call the angel investing stage and then uh, mezzanine stage this is the stage where the funding is provided by the venture capital funds of course this is the second stage to, uh, to the seed stage and of course this is where the firm is preparing to go for the ipo so that makes a to be the correct option seed stage and yes that is the right answer what is the most significant drawback of a repeat sales index to measure returns to real estate sample selection bias yes uh, sample selection bias it's it's a significant drawback because the properties that sell in each period they vary and may not be representative of the overall market the index is uh, is trying to cover or is meant to cover so that makes a to be the correct option next compared with the direct investment in infrastructure publicly traded infrastructure securities are characterized by now listen direct investment in infrastructure it involves higher concentration risk in direct investment in infrastructure it results in greater control over the infrastructure assets so these a and c they are they are characteristics of direct investment in infrastructure but when the investment is made in publicly traded infrastructure security it is characterized by more transparent governance more liquidity reasonable fee and of course the ability to diversify across various assets so this is the feature of 
of publicly traded infrastructure. So compared with the direct investment infrastructure, publicly traded infrastructure is characterized by more transparent governance. And these ANC, they, they are, are characteristics of direct investment in infrastructure. So that makes B to be the correct option. An equity hedge fund following a fundamental growth strategy uses fundamental analysis to identify companies that are most likely to most likely to be undervalued. This is incorrect because the fundamental value strategies use the uh, fundamental analysis to identify undervalued companies. This is incorrect. Not the fundamental growth strategy. Then likely to be either undervalued or overvalued. That is incorrect as well because market neutral strategies these are the strategies that that use uh, either quantitative or fundamental analysis to identify under or overvalued companies so this is again incorrect then of course fundamental growth strategies use fundamentals analysis to identify companies that are most likely to experience high growth and capital appreciation and that makes c to be the correct option moving on which of the following is most likely to be available when conducting hedge fund due diligence? The benchmark used uh, by the fund, correct. When conducting hedge fund due diligence, it should be possible to identify what yardstick, what benchmark has been used to assess the performance of the fund. So this is correct. So A is correct option. Why B and C are not correct? Because hedge funds, uh, they think that their strategies, their systems, their processes, they are their property. They, they think they, are to, they have control on them, so they are unwilling and reluctant to provide much information about these to the potential investors. So that's why B, C is not correct. A is the right answer. A private equity fund desiring to realize an immediate and complete cash exit from a portfolio company is most likely to pursue an IPO, will be difficult to exit. Trade sale, correct. This is correct. Private equity funds can uh, realize an immediate cash exit in a trade sale. So that makes B to be the correct option. As the loan to value ratio increases for a real estate investment, risk most likely increases for, well, the loan to value ratio when it increases, it would result in higher leverage. So basically higher leverage it is for both, both for debt investors and both for equity investors. So when the loan to value ratio increases, the higher leverage is for a real estate which increases the risk to both the debt investor and equity investor. So that makes C to be the correct option. Which of the following forms of infrastructure investment is most liquid? An unlisted infrastructure mutual fund? No, it will be liquid. A direct investment in a greenfield project? Even harder to do so. Yes, an exchange traded master limited partnership this would provide the much needed liquidity exchange traded mlp they provide the benefit of liquidity that's why c is the right answer an investor chooses to invest in brownfield rather than greenfield infrastructure project the investor is most likely motivated by you would have gone through your reading so you would know that brownfield investment is an investment in an existing infrastructure asset so such an investment is uh, likely to have steady cash flows compared to greenfield which is a new project in uh, investment so in this case the investor is most likely to be motivated by predictable cash flows because in brownfield uh, investments infrastructure project investment the cash flows are consistent risk is less they are less risky and they provide better predictable cash flows so pretty straightforward question b is the right answer the privatization of an existing hospital is best described as since this hospital is existing and we know 
investing in an existing infrastructure asset whether to privatize or lease or sell or lease back the asset it is uh, known as brownfield investment so this is brownfield investment so it is brownfield not greenfield and uh, an economic infrastructure investment well it involves assets such as transportation utilities so on and so forth so that picks b to be the correct option next a hedge fund invests primarily in uh, distressed debt quoted market prices are available for the underlying holdings but they trade infrequently which of the following will be will the hedge fund most likely use in calculating the net asset value for trading purposes well many analysts believe that uh, if an investment is illiquid like this one which which is infrequently traded the liquidity discounts are necessary to reflect fair value so which means there there will be two types of navs one would be for trading purposes and one would be for reporting purposes so the fund may use average course for reporting purposes but apply liquidity discounts for trading purposes so average costs are for reporting purposes since we need for trading purposes so for trading purposes we will use average costs adjusted for liquidity that makes b to be the correct option angel investing capital is typically provided in which stage of financing we have just discussed it uh, it a little while ago angel investing capital is provided at not the later stage the formative stage once the seed capital is provided by the venture capitalist then of course in the early stage of financing the formative stage of financing angel capital is provided so that makes b to be the correct option if a commodity's forward curve is in contango what is contango contango occurs when there is uh, when there is uh, little or no convenience yield now what about roll yield roll yield basically refers to the difference between the spot price of a commodity and uh, the price specified by its future contract in other words the future price is higher than the spot price the commodity forward curve as you can see is an upward sloping curve and this is what we call contango contango occurs when there is little or no convenience yield so that makes uh, b to be the correct option then what about collateral yield well collateral yield simply the return earned on the margin money but b is the right option next question number 26 united capital is a hedge fund with 250 million of initial capital okay united charges a 2% management fee based on the assets under management at year end and a 20% incentive fee based on return in excess of 8% hurdle rate okay in its first year united appreciates 16% now this is the situation this is the original investment at the start of the period and it grew by 16% which means at the end the valuation is uh 250 times 1.16 that gives you 290 million now the first thing is that we have to pay a 2% management fee of 290 which will be equal to 5.8 million right now what was the hurdle rate hurdle rate was 8% so we were expecting a minimum of 8% of 250 8% of 250 would give you 20 million so we thought that the fund would go up by 8% so it's going to be 270 million but instead it went up to 290 so if we deduct 5.8 million from 290 and take the difference between 
these two 290 less 5.8 less 270 this would give you the return in excess of 270 excluding this 5.8 management fee so whatever is left above 20 million we will have to pay 20 percent as the incentive fee and if we do the computation you should get 2.84 So this is the total uh, fee to the United Capital, 5.8 million and 2.84 combined, it is 8.64 million. Now we need to calculate the net return. So net return is simply equal to 290 less the initial value of the fund, less the amount paid as a, as a total fee to United. 8.64 and divide it with the original value at the start 250. If you do all the simple com computation, you'll get 12.54. Yeah, that's all. That's that's the percentage. So that gives you B to be the correct option. B it is next. Capricorn fund of funds invest uh, GBP 100 million pounds 100 million in each of Alpha hedge funds ABC hedge fund. Capricorn FOF has a 1 and 10 fee structure. So fund of fund has 1 and 10 fee structure means that 1% uh, management fee and 10% incentive fee. Management fee and incentive fee are calculated independently at the end of each year. After one year, net of their respective management and incentive fee, the investment in alpha is valued at 8 million and investment in ABC is valued at 140 million. The annual return to an investor in Capricorn net of fee assessed at the fund of funds level is closest to. Now, first, the initial combined value of these two funds, 100 plus 100, that is 200 million pounds okay and the end combined value is 140 plus 80 that is 220 million pounds okay now we have to pay management fee at the rate of one percent which will be equal to 2.2 million pounds first thing then the incentive fee what would be the incentive fee the difference between the value at the end less at start because they have to be calculated separately. Just take 10% of this value. It will be uh, 20 million times 10%. That is 2 million. Which means the combined fee would be a total fee to Capricorn would be 4.2 million. Now, if you want to calculate the investor's net return, it's going to be the final value funds of funds, 220, less the initial value, less the fee paid to uh, Capricorn, the total fee pay that is 4.2 million. So that will give you the net return based upon the initial value of the fund of funds 200. If you do the computation, that will give you about 7.9%. That is A. The following information applies to Rotunda Advisors, a hedge fund, 288 million in assets under management as of prior year, 2% management fee based on the year end assets under management 20 percent incentive fee calculated net of management fee using a five percent hurdle rate and using a high watermark that is 357 million if incentive fee would be payable if the value of the fund after the management fee is above 357 million at the rate of five percent and current year fund returns are 25 percent which means your fund at the start had a value of 288 million which went up by 25%, which means the closing value of the fund is $360 million. And out of this $360 million, 2% has to be paid as a management fee, which is $7.2 million, which means the net of management fee, the fund value, falls to uh, $352.8 million, which is clearly less than the high watermark, which means... Net of fee, the fund does not exceed 357, so there is no incentive fee earned. So the value 
the management fee, the total fee earned is 7.2 million. That makes A to be the correct option. A hedge fund has the following fee structure. Annual management fee based on year-end assets under management, 2%. Incentive fee, 20%. Hurdle rate before incentive fee collection starts, 4%. Current high watermark, 610 which means the center fee would be paid if the fund value is above 610. The fund has a value of uh, 583.1 million at the beginning of the year. After one year, it has a value of 642 million before the fee. The net return to an investor for this year is closer to, first of all, this is the value at the end after one year. That will attract 2% annual management fee so it's going to be 642 times 2 percent so it's 12.84 as you can see the ending value it exceeds the high watermark so the hedge fund can now uh, receive the incentive fee how do we calculate the incentive fee Incentive fee would be the difference between 642 less what the fund was supposed to earn as a hurdle rate, that is 610 at the rate of 1.04. This differential must be multiplied with 20% as incentive fee. So when you do, you will get uh, 1.52 million dollars. So this is the annual management fee, this is the incentive fee combined will be deducted from the ending value of the fund so as to calculate the net return. So what you are going to do, 642, the end value less 12.84, that is the annual management fee, less incentive fee. So this is the net available for the funds out of the total initial value 583.1. And if you do the simplification, you would get 7.64%. Uh, so that makes uh, C to be the correct option. Okay, next question. Ash Lawn Partners, uh, a fund of hedge funds, has the following fee structure. First, 220 underlying funds fee. 220 means 2% management fee and 20% incentive fee would be charged with the funds with the incentive fee calculated independently. Once done, then Ash Lawn fee, the next layer of fee, are Cal calculated net of all underlying fund fee, the above, 1% management fee based on year-end market value, 10% incentive fee calculated net of management fee. The fund and all underlying funds have no hurdle rate or high watermark fee conditions. In the last year, Ash Lawn's funds value increased from 100 million to 133 million before the deduction of management and incentive fee of the fund or underlying funds. Based on the information provided, the total fee earned by all funds in the aggregate is closest to. Well, let us first calculate the fund fee. Since the value of the fund has increased from 100 to 133, which means the final value 133 will attract 2% management fee. So it's going to be 133 million times 2%, which will be 2.66 million done then incentive fee the incentive fee would be 20% uh, of the difference between the opening and closing value so it's going to be 133 minus 100 the differential will be multiplied with 20% that will be the incentive fee so 133 less 100 33 million times 20% that will give you 6.6 .6 million dollars so the total of these two 2.66 and uh, 6.6 uh, 6 will give you a total of 9.26 million. So we are done till here. Now, next, the Ash Lawn fee. Now, the assets under management at the end of the year they had a value of 133 million, but out of this, we have already charged 9.26 million the funds fee, the remaining. Amount 123.74 will attract 1% management fee. 1% of this gives you 
1.2374 right then the next incentive fee the incentive fee would be 123.74 less 1.2374's 10% which will be if simplified give you uh 2.25 million approximately now since we have to calculate the total fee so it's going to be this 2.66 6.6 which is 9.26 and this 1.237 plus 22 2.25 this will give you the total the aggregate fee earned by all funds and this would be closest to, if you add all these it should be closest to 12.75 so that gives you b to be the correct option next risks in infrastructure investing are most likely greatest when the project involves construction of infrastructure assets yes infrastructure projects involving construction have more risk than investment in existing assets why because these assets will be leased back to the government so so they will have uh, less consistent cash flows than the investment in existing assets so that makes a to be the correct option next an investor in a private equity fund is concerned that the general partner can receive incentive fees in excess of the agreed on incentive fee by making distributions over time based on profits earned rather than making distributions only at exit from the investment of the fund which of the following is most likely to protect the investor from the general partners receiving excess fee high hurdle rate well high hurdle rate uh, can possibly reduce the likelihood of uh, excess distribution but it cannot prevent so this is not the correct option clawback provisions yes a clawback provision requires the general partners in a private equity fund to return any funds distributed as an incentive fee until the limited partners have received back their initial investments so this will protect the general partners so that means this would be the right option why not lower capital requirement incorrect because management fee are based on committed capital so that makes b to be the correct option next until the committed capital is fully drawn down and invested the management fee for a private equity fund is based on invested capital no the management fee for a private equity fund is based on the committed capital not invested capital right so it's going to be b committed capital that makes b to be the correct option an analyst wanting to assess the downside risk of an alternative investment is least likely mind the word least likely to use the investments sortino ratio value at risk he will do this and this because both of these are the measures of downside risk and uh, then if not a and b then it has to be c this would be least likely why because many alternative investments they they do not exhibit normal distribution of returns so so if we assume let's say if we assume the returns are normally distributed so then it will result in measures that will lead to an underestimation of downside risk for for a negatively skewed distribution so this is least likely to be true so that's why b c is the right answer an effective risk management process used by alternative investment funds most likely include in house valuation incorrect independent valuations of the underlying position should be performed not in house internal custody of assets this is incorrect as well because just like the above uh, independent valuations we recommend third party custody of assets this can help reduce the chance of fraud so that means uh, not a and b then it has to be c segregation of risk and investment process duties that's absolutely correct option
investment risk monitoring should be done by someone else like chief risk officer and this person should be independent of investment process so there must be segregation between these two roles so that makes c to be the correct option and it ends your introduction to alternative investment